Junior middleweight bout ready to go now. Unbeaten title contender Yuri Foreman faces James Moore in a bout scheduled for 10 rounds. Yuri Foreman was born in the former Soviet Republic of Belarus, started boxing at eight, moved to Israel, and won three national championships. He moved to Brooklyn at 18, won a Golden Gloves title, and turned pro seven years ago. We last saw him on Showbox in 2005 against Kevin Cagle in a battle of undefeated prospects. Foreman on the left was impressive as a boxer. He's not blessed with a lot of power, but he used his excellent technique to control range, pace, and action. That night he showed too much class for Cagle, sweeping all eight rounds on the three scorecards. Foreman's won eight straight since, including his last fight two months ago. He's 24-0 with eight KOs. What's behind the numbers, Steve? Well, there's a hidden win for Yuri Foreman, Nick. He's faced much better opposition than Moore. An example, three and a half years ago, he convincingly outpointed Jesus Soto Carras, who's now a red-hot welterweight. Yuri, not George. Foreman is a boxer without any bang. He's been the 10-round distance in seven of his last eight fights, but he almost always finishes strong. And good timing. Foreman hasn't been that busy this year, but he went 10 less than two months ago. For a fighter who relies so much on timing, Nick, and sharpness, activity is definitely a key. Hey, you can't hear that. Uh, you can't miss hearing that chanting. It's for this guy. The Irish are in the building. James Moore, three-time national amateur champion from Ireland, moved to New York, had 314 amateur fights, won a Golden Gloves title in the States, turned pro at age 27. He's now 30 and has built his record against limited opposition. He's a pressure fighter, strong body puncher who will look to chase down Foreman. He was a heavy favorite in his only defeat this past June when he got dropped and lost a unanimous decision. Moore bounced back in August, though, with a win, and he's now 16-1 and with 10 KOs. Take us behind his numbers, Steve. Well, you mentioned his loss, Nick. It was inexcusable. The one defeat came against Gabe Rosado, who was 9-2, and two, and those two losses against fighters who were 12-13 and 13 and 3-2. and two. That's why Moore is a big underdog tonight. Moore punches. The key to Moore's success, work rate. The fact that he's gone eight rounds or more in his three most recent fights should be a big help. And going downstairs, Moore's KO percentage is okay, but he needs to pound the body before going for the finish. Trouble is, Foreman isn't likely to stand there. That's the setup for our leadoff bout of the night. Yuri Foreman puts that perfect record on the line against James Moore. Here's ring announcer Joe Antonacci. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Boardwalk Hall, Atlantic City, New Jersey for Showbox, the new generation. Brought to you by Bob Arams, Top Rank Incorporated, and Caesars Atlantic City. Tonight's action is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Aaron Davis, Commissioner. Our NABF representative at ringside, Joseph Dwyer. Introducing to you our three judges judging at ringside, Raul Nieves, Steve Weisfeld, and Gene Williams. And our referee, Randy Newman. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds of action for the NABF Middleweight Championship. Presenting first the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with green trim. He weighed in at 153.4 pounds. He enters the ring with a record of 16 wins, just one loss, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome from County Wicklow, Ireland, now fighting from Queens, New York, James Moore! And fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim. He weighed in at 154 pounds, undefeated in 26 fights. 26 wins, no losses, with eight wins coming by knockout. From Gomel, Belarus, now fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, the defending NABF junior middleweight champion, Yuri Foreman.
Okay, gentlemen, I know you're both familiar with the rules as we got over them thoroughly. I want you to remember two things. I want you to obey my commands. But number one, defend yourselves at all times. I'll shake hands and come out of the belt. Yuri slightly longer. The other physical dimension similar, and they shouldn't make a difference because this is a matchup of contrasting styles, not contrasting sizes. And the unified rules are in effect here in New Jersey. We're in Atlantic City, about ready to go. Our special Saturday night show box. Yuri Foreman, unbeaten, risks it against James Moore. Guy, he's got to get past, and Moore can't afford another loss this year. Moore in the Irish colors. He's in green and white. Foreman will be the guy moving, and Moore will be the guy chasing. And Steve Moore's got to... You know, I think he's got to just keep the heat on and control the pace and rattle Yuri Foreman. Something a lot of guys have not been able to do. Oh, that's it. It's going to be about constant pressure for James Moore. One backward step, and, and he's going to be losing the fight because Yuri is all about speed, and I think Moore's problem is lack of speed. So Moore has to make up for that deficit by smothering Yuri Foreman. And you see amateur experience, James Moore, oh. number three in the world at one point. Yuri Foreman, New York Golden Glove champ in 2001. Professional experience, Foreman, a lot more experience, a lot more rounds. James Moore didn't turn pro until he was 27. James Moore got hit really solid with a right hand from Foreman. Foreman, as we both mentioned, not a big puncher by any means, but man, can he use the ring? And this is a big one, it's 20 feet. Nice right hand again from Foreman. It's strange, Moore is dropping the left a little bit, but Foreman absolutely sharp shooting. He has found the mark with the right to the jaw several times in this first minute sum of the uh, opening, uh, opening round. Moore trying to chase down, but do it intelligently. Look at his hands are low. Foreman easily out of uh, a new, creating new position, and that right hand has been uh, scoring repeatedly, Steve. Yuri's is just a, a step faster. Quicker with his hands and quicker with his feet. One of the reasons, Nick, that Yuri Foreman isn't a big puncher is he moves left, then right, then left, then right, and he's doing it as he's switching. He squares up a lot, and it's impossible to throw serious punches when you square because you can't get leverage. Yeah, he's always on the move when he's throwing, and he said, you know, I'm trying to work on sitting down on shots. He's not blessed with power. Moore had a shot there. Foreman walked in. Square again, not punching, and Moore couldn't find him. Moore trying to get the jab unloaded. Look at that right hand again. It's been continual. Now Foreman stuffs the uh, jab, goes to work on the body, and he looks like the big puncher roughing up and driving James Moore back. A terrible round for James Moore. One of the best we've seen Yuri Foreman put together. I think Yuri was insulted that we said he wasn't a big puncher. <laughs> Maybe he heard us. He's used to it. How many times have we said it? Right hand again. Steve, it's happening continuously. That left is not that low, but low enough for Foreman to drill him. He just finds that little pinhole opening. You know, these two have sparked quite a bit over the years at Gleason's gym and elsewhere. It seems it's really helped Foreman because he's timing more so well with that right hand. To use your right hand. You gotta right hand him over the jab. When he's coming in, keep the rhythm. Keep the jab out. Watch me, James. You gotta right hand him over the jab. Right away. Don't don't think don't think defense. Think offense. When he's jabbing, think offense. Right hand. Don't think defense. Action from round one. The story of this round. Yuri Foreman's right hand. That time he just beat Moore to the punch. Moore started to jab. Foreman was faster with the right hand, and that's a different look there because it's an overhand right. So Foreman mixing up the right hands. Again, an overhand right there. A lot of times overhand punches make it harder for the opponent to see just because they're starting so low. You're not, you're not, your eyes don't catch them. Good boy. James Moore has to do a 180. That was a horrible first round for him. Yuri Foreman has controlled the ring. Used, his, used it and used his head. He's frustrating more with movement, but he's sitting down and you know, slugging single shots. He's on the jab. He's beating Moore, as you said, with a punch, Steve. You know, Moore's just gotta just gotta go with him. He's gotta fire with him. 
And he's got to move his feet very quickly. It's hard to trap Foreman because he moves left and right. Oh, wonderful uh, use of the ring. We've seen his last couple of fights ringside. And, uh, you know, he had a tough fight with an Andre Serkan, the Showbox alum, but he outclassed him. And that seems to be the ticket he's after again tonight. But he came out with some serious, uh, serious punching. Foreman's in the black. Trying to stick the jab. Moore is just waiting, waiting, waiting. Not going with him. Break the time, break. Let him go, let him go. Really, even if he cuts the ring off, Foreman's just pot shot. Right hand again over the top. Left of the body. Yuri's fighting really fast and well, creating those fresh angles. Oh, and on the way out, the hook. It's all about speed, Nick. Foreman is so much faster. Every time Moore is set to punch, Foreman changes his position. He's, he's either left or right at the punch, so Moore isn't getting off because his mind is telling him there's an opening, but by the time he starts throwing the punch, the opening's gone. There it is. It's a difference between a guy who could be a club fighter and a guy who's a contender. Moore trying to run down Foreman, just touching, touching, not taking Foreman out of rhythm at all. Foreman's already broken James Moore's rhythm. Foreman in black, creating distance. He has a tendency to drop that left hand, but only when it's when he's out of danger. But I haven't seen Moore try a, lead, a short little lead right hand at all. And in this shot, Nick, here, where we're looking at a wider shot where you can see the fighter's feet. And you can see that, that Moore is basically a plotter, where Foreman is on the balls of his feet all the time. He bounces a lot. Sometimes I feel like I need drama mean when he fights, because he's moving uh -huh. so much. But right now it's effective because Moore doesn't know where Foreman's going to be. I like the way he moves. Again, it's those turns, turns. He's got new openings. You know, I think he's made the advance. That's how he's creating these openings, not just finding them. But Moore has been a willing target, I think. Coming forward, not jabbing, runs into a partially blocked right hand. Another dominating round from the man in black, Yuri Foreman. He's unbeaten. Our opening bout on Showbox. Later on, Kendall Holt defends his junior welterweight belt against the unbeaten Demetrius Hopkins. Stick around. Hey, hey, punch, End of two. Hopkins touch him with the right hand to the body. Step over to the right with your left hook. Right hand to the body, left hook, then a right hand right behind. Nice straight, last two shots, nice and straight, okay? Left hook, right hand. Always back it up. You're doing a beautiful job. But I'd like to see you go from side to side a little bit more and use your face, okay? How you feel? All right, all right. Listen, faint this guy. Well, he, only thing he has is the right hand, and it's not working because he's loop. Don't loop to a right hand, boy. You know, Joe Greer talking about uh, Moore as a one-trick pony with a right hand. I always thought his left hook was the best, but man, he hasn't been inside to land it all night. Very true, but whether it's a right hand or a left hook, James Moore has to be close. What makes him good when he's good is his body punching. That's why this is a tough style matchup for him. It's hard to throw body punches from the outside. Yeah, he hasn't been able to get inside at all. And Foreman, great feet, good hand speed. They do want him to step to the to the right, fire that right hand left hook combination. Uh, you see that drill, drill the jab. See? That that knee brace on Foreman, nothing to uh, be alarmed about. He always wears it, and it's from an old knee injury that hasn't acted it up in quite a while. I don't think there's anything to be alarmed about. The way he moves now, there's nothing wrong with his knee. But based on what James Moore is presenting in the way of a challenge, now he has more, uh, Foreman on the ropes, and Foreman just muscles him back. And a key moment there, because for the first time, Moore got Foreman to the ropes. What happened? Foreman spun out immediately. Well, Moore let him. Moore's just a beat behind. And he's not a great puncher either. So he's got it. He's got to work with Yuri Foreman, and he's getting out punched two to one. Foreman 
goes to work. Body then tries to go upstairs. Moore trying to get dialed in. It's not working. Foreman just playing keep away and now tie up. Randy Newman of one of the rare breaks. Moore is chasing in vain. This is a, your is effective, Nick. There's no doubt about it. I know you like his movement, but this is the problem I have with him. I think a lot of his movement is unnecessary. In the first round, he dominated with his right hand. Oh, he chilled, he chilled him with a right there. You want to see him do more fighting. You want to see him do more punches oh, with less movement. I'm with you. He's rocking more every time he hits him with that right hand. Every time. I just think his accuracy has been excellent. Oh, well, again, he has more walked into a stiff jab. We want feigning, feigning, and a little side-to-side -side movement. Uh, Joe Greer there, stepping to the side. Now coming up is uh, Foreman, nothing really connected. To put it nicely, Moore is puzzled when they're on the outside, and they've been on the outside the whole fight, break, so break, he has no answers. No. Uh, it's two different class of fighters, Steve, right now. Well, Yuri certainly has fought the much better opposition, no doubt about that. Well, the only thing that's going to change it, Steve, it really is. Uh, Moore's got to catch him. Like all guys, who try to chase him down. Andre Serkin caught him and had his moments that way. End of three here in Atlantic City. We go to James Moore's. James, you got to fake him sometime. You're going to the job. You the fake. Fake. I'm saying job, job, take the job, left hook, right hand. Come on, you was doing it in the restroom, let's go. What are you waiting for? Job, fake him, job, fake him, left hook, right hand. And you gotta punch when you get in there. You're not working enough in there. You're not working enough. Come on. Former fighter. I want the cut flash. I want to work Lennox the upper cut, the right upper cut. Lennox Blackmore showing some moves. Right in. His fighter needs some of those moves right now. Again, Foreman with the right hand. You gotta be forced, James. You gotta be forced. Use speed, man. Come on. Body language. Jab, right hook. Left hook. Come on. Take it from him. Come on. Don't let him. Take it from him. See, he yeah, hits a more for an iron prior, Nick, and uh, yeah, showed some of those moves. Wow. Didn't last long in that fight, but he was a legitimate top 10 junior welter. That was long ago and pounds away. <laughs> for all of us. Yes. Boy, James Moore, I, I, you hit the word puzzled, that's exactly it. And I was looking at his trainer, I know what you're telling me to do, but I just can't do it. That's the impression I've gotten through three. Gary Foreman in the black has swept all three rounds in right, arguably. No punch, no punch. No. James Moore with a loss this year. Can't afford another one. Now he had a chance to get into a little exchange with uh, Foreman. But, you know, it's more trying to set up and create space a little bit. And, you know, Steve, we did his last fight in New York, and I thought that, you know, he had trouble shortening up inside. So he needs to get close to Foreman, but I don't think he's that effective when he gets close. So, you know, this is making it more, more of a mountain to climb for him. Now he's got to just be busier. Catch him and box with this guy a little bit. Well, what can he do, Steve? You know, sometimes, Nick, you know, a corner's job is between rounds is to tell the fighter to make adjustments, what to do. Sometimes there's no answer. Sometimes if what you need to do, you don't have the physical equipment. Well, that's what I said, yeah. That's what you said at the start of the round, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the case here. I think so, too. He's too slow. And see, inside, he's not effective. I, I really think he's starting to be in a fight he can't win. And he's starting to get backed up, Nick, and that's, that's a very bad sign. But that said, then, we're in the fourth. You know, Foreman, given his style, only eight KOs in his 26 wins, uh, should he start you know, revving it up a little bit more? He's doing everything right in terms of winning rounds, but well, why, why take a shot? Why take, why take a chance? It's not his way. I'd like to see Foreman rev it up because it would be more exciting, and he would be more excited. But, uh, you know, he's used to going the distance. And one thing about Yuri Foreman, a big right hand. Oh, wow. One thing about him, you see him bouncing and moving. He can do that for 12 rounds. He doesn't, or 10 rounds, whatever the case. He does not slow down late in fights. Steve, I haven't heard Lennox Blackmore's every word in the corner, but why they aren't telling him to do something to get around that straight right hand. Over the top, he's just dropping it in for him again and again. So move away from it, perhaps, you know? 
duck under it. But James Moore, for a pressure fighter, does not get that low when he comes in. That's one of the reasons he's eating those right hands. He doesn't yeah. duck under them. And there he wasn't able to shorten up with the right. He closed distance and did nothing. Man, I know we're on this guy, but it's it's a mismatch, Steve. Yuri, uh, Yuri Foreman with a sparring session right now. Again, look, he's working what he wants. He's got quickness and he's shown Work real fun punching here through four. Sweeping this fight. Everything's okay. You're looking good. Listen. Listen. I'm looking for you to hide your right hand behind your jab. Immediately, as soon as you touch him with that jab, he's pulling back. As soon as you touch him with that jab, fire that straight right hand and then step over to the left, the right with the left hook. Okay? Yeah. Gotta be a little hard. Come on, and you gotta still be still on top of the game. He ain't not staying on top. Don't be like a this call. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Put some, put some minimum split. Stay with him, work with him. And when you get through, you gotta punch him up, punch him in there. Come on, man. Come on, James, you gotta work more, work more. Work more. Well, even if you're not first again, throw with the guy. Okay, Steve, uh, nobody needs adjustments, the guy in black, that's for sure. Wow, look at this. Yeah, Yuri came out very fast, three big shots. And Steve, uh, that was more secret weapon. Remember what he told us yesterday? Yeah, that that uh, foreman comes out very, very fast to put a punch for us five seconds, and he wanted to catch it, right? <laughs> he, he caught punches. He didn't get man. In the fifth, scheduled ten rounder Yuri Foreman and Black has undefeated James Moore with a single loss. Has probably lost every round. I'm out here. Five rounds or more, Yuri Foreman, no KOs. He is a distance fighter, like it or not. James Moore, for a pressure fighter, you'd think he'd have some late stoppages. He doesn't. All right, don't punch. Don't punch him back. And Steve, uh, you know, Moore not showing any signs of being hurt by any of those shots either, right? So, it, but he's just befuddled. Can't catch up with form and speed or movement. Moore waiting, waiting, waiting. No head movement. Coming in. So Foreman could just pot shot him. No punch. And that's what Foreman does. He pot shots. Bouncing and moving as much as he does, it's always going to be very difficult for him to get power in anything. Jab, hook, or cross. Now he's going first, though. That sweeping right hand landed. Look at Moore trying to shorten up. He really looked bad right, inside punch. with that right hand. It's, he needs his distance, but then he can't catch up to Foreman. So what at the level for the Irishman James Moore? Greer, his manager, his trainer, wants him to drop in that left hook. There, but there's the left hook delayed. He's getting free shots. Moore not punching enough again. That's what Lennox Blackwell was imploring him to do. And if there have been ten good body shots landed in this fight, Foreman is the fighter who's landed nine of them. Good point. Well, Foreman's a guy, you know, getting rough with Moore. Another thing that James Moore would have to do would say, body this guy but once you catch up to him, like here. If he's getting right, driven punch, back. Foreman too slick, too busy. And too untested. Right hand, short. It was a choppy one, but it drove Moore back and forced him to reload. Moore now trying to get some distance. There is he inside. Problems again. Both of these guys have been cut. Break. Step back, each man, one step back. Yuri with a wink to the uh, Showtime announcers. He's having a good time in there. This is exactly his kind of fight. That's right. Halfway through this 10-rounder. Well, our main event next, Kendall Holt, Brandon Jacobs, the big guy, man. Hey, heavyweight, uh, maybe he could help hold out between rounds. Who knows? Uh, they're there waiting, the New York Giants, and Holt trying to focus, concentrate. Of course, Henry Cortez, 
his the guy who's in the corner with him, his manager, with legal issues absent tonight. So hope needing a friend, perhaps. That's why right, everybody come in here. We check. We check for weapons. Ask the cameraman. Cameraman, you got checked? We checking everybody. Everybody got checked. <laughs> And Holt's five-year-old son with him. Keyshawn, yeah. Holt, in fact, uh, trained here at home to be with his son who was in school. So he's a single parent. And, and maybe a good thing to have a Brandon Jacobs in the dressing room. Everything about Holt for the last few days has been tight Up and tight. tense. Oh, and to man. see him laughing there with Brandon Jacobs maybe loosening him up a little bit is a, is a good sign. That's good observation, Steve. Here we go to the sixth. Yuri Foreman, the 154-pound junior middleweight uh, contender, Having his way, stuffs the jab in James Moore's face. Moore short with his jab. Foreman turns, turns. Look at this little turn, center of the ring. It's just right on the uh, logo there. Now he backs Moore off. Moore inviting him in. And Foreman controlling the distance of this fight. This fight is fought at. It's exactly the kind of fight he wants. Fact, the only punch we haven't right, seen punch. from Yuri Foreman is the left hook. Hasn't used that much anyways. Corner trainer Joe Greer calling for it. But you know what? Foreman can dominate with the occasional jab, the occasional one-two, and the occasional lead right. Put all that together. He's not missing. He's scoring with a high percentage of his shots making, controlling this fight. Well, you know, up the horizons, up the ladder there, there are some really tough champions and contenders ahead of Yuri Foreman and they're all southpaws so that might be another another colossal challenge for him but we're getting ahead of ourselves he, he's trying to line himself up for a title fight soon and they talk about Daniel Santos as perhaps being the guy interesting matchup I I, really, I firmly believe that it will be hard for Foreman to get a shot he's not style wise he's a difficult guy to fight he's going to be moving a lot Fighters like guys who come to them, as opposed to guys who move away from them. Well, Foreman here having, having it his way. That right hand, uh, Moore soaking up shots. There he is, running into punches. Ah, now a right hand from James Moore. But and now Moore's getting a lead. He is, and he needs to, but you see the discipline of Foreman. He came forward, he had Moore against the ropes. Instead of staying there, more movement. Yeah, and then he'll wrap him up at times, too. Yuri Foreman sticks the jab, creates that space. Moore can't get to him. Now he'll move left. Away. Real clinic for Yuri Foreman. Indeed, you know, Larry Holmes famously said that you have to get him drunk before your mother. <laughs> well, I guess Foreman doesn't think James yeah. Moore's drunk enough, but... He's feeding them the booze, that's for sure. He absolutely is. Good analogy. Foreman misses in front of us. Now back center of the ring. Body shot from Foreman, but you're right, no left hooks. It's back to what we said, both of us early, Steve, that uh, no more knows what he has to do, he just can't do it. Doesn't have the skills to do it, perhaps, and certainly in this matchup. Good job. Good job. Very good. Listen, this guy, you gotta catch him down the body. You're hitting him with you're hitting him with P shots. You're hitting him with right one right hand and popping out. Right now is in the second half we talked about. Now you got action from round six with this camera angle. You see Yuri Foreman fighting at the distance he wants. This is ring generalship. Easily steps out of range with more punches. Using his feet is one of the most underrated methods of defense. And there were more steps in Crowd to punch. Deck. Foreman okay? takes, the, takes uh, yeah. the opportunity to counter punch. Very, the very good ring down. generalship. So you get him on rope, dig downstairs, then go to the head. Mouthpiece. We go to the seventh, and I agree with you, Steve. Yeah, I really like uh, Foreman as a, he thinks in the ring. You know, where to be, where not to be. And that is ring generalship. I love you, and I love he's just controlling the action, even without punching. And you but know what? We he, would like to see more punching. Of course. <laughs> Foreman is, has also been the rougher guy when they have gotten on the inside on the very brief times that they've been on the inside. He's been Foreman pushing more back 
Foreman more reckless use of his head. You think he was the pressure fighter, not more? Absolutely. More just coming forward and yeah, it's like he's throwing that jab out there ineffectively and trying to work under it. Right, let him go, let him go. And Foreman's just timing everything, you know? He's got the timing and the speed. You combine that and it puts more way behind. It's because more is so predictable. It's just again, you know, class A against the double A or triple A. Right. How about the fact that Yuri Foreman Dick, has to be the only fighter in the world studying to be a rabbi? Right. Uh, right. Exactly. Mouthpiece out now, so we'll stop. In the white corner. Yours? Yours. Yuri, chill. Ah, he's spit it out. He's winning every round. I don't think it's really right, 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 right. hey, hey, hey. it's out again. It's out again. Randy Newman will pick it up. Foreman said that he hit him on the break. All right, now we'll pick it up halfway through the second. Had a good fight. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. Don't hit the clinches. Hitting in the clinches, James Moore with that right hand. Right. He's got to try everything. Wow. Now, see, that's where really he That rung, it seemed, James Moore's. It rung his bell. It got hit behind the ear, out, out the uh, left ear. And he's clinching, Steve. Right. Yeah, yeah he's, he's in trouble with the form and performance credit, Nick. Look, he's taking advantage of it. Yeah, you can tell. Look at it. He's just pawing at it, flicking at it. Foreman should unload that right hand, and he's going for it. Right. Not to speculate, but you wonder, is there an equilibrium problem? Right. Get him right out of here. Work out, work out. More covering up mostly. He looks completely ineffective. Now he seems to got his, he's got his legs back. But oh, all right, all right. Hey, hey. He's out None of, of shit. I mean, it's like he doesn't want to fight anymore, Steve. He's, <laughs> he's out of answer. Nick, I get such a kick out of Randy Newman. He was a, a heavyweight, briefly top ten. He fought Chuck Wagner three times. They did, they did things in the ring to each oh, other yeah. that no referee He's would allow for a right? Exactly, and here he is warning these guys. And Randy would be the first to laugh about it. Well, if, more, if Foreman did a little more, it'd almost be a 10-8 round for what it's worth. It's... Uh, completely one-sided, wall-to-wall. Waxing by Yuri Foreman over James Moore. Uh, coming up next, a world championship on the line. And Demetrius Hopkins, unbeaten, a week ago didn't know he'd be fighting for this title. But he was in training to fight somebody else tonight. Now he'll be staring at the guy they call the Shark. The man who will attack. Kendall Holt. Holt trying to keep his belt. Hopkins trying to take it. together. I want your hands high, son, because the only chance he has is a right hand over top, and you'll keep dropping your left hand, lead hand, okay? Let's go back to the jab. Feign him out. If you feign him and then counter, you got it going up. All right? Let's go. go back to uh, between rounds, as we head to the eighth, ice on James Moore's right ear, so it's a problem, Steve. It was really apparent. Well, he reached for it twice. Yeah, he's got to really right, go for it now. He's getting real mean inside. Moore's got to do everything he can. He's taking, you know, it's got to hurt. Punch, He's in punch. pain. Let him out, let him out. Good advice from Yuri Foreman for, from Joe Greer. But, you know, giving Yuri advice in this fight is sort of like drawing up plays <laughs> in football against a bad defense. Exactly. Everything you tell the guy is going to work. <laughs> trying now, so he's back on the jab at least. Foreman rips that right hand, partially blocked, right up the middle, almost a hybrid uppercut from Foreman. So he's getting the right hand happy, Steve. We're watching that left ear, or I see if Moore reacts, flicks at it. We haven't seen it, but he put his ice the entire minute between rounds. Nick, these guys sparred as many as maybe 60 rounds. And from what I've heard about those sparring sessions, 
Foreman got the better of it. And I think that confidence carried into tonight. He just knew that he'd be too fast. He didn't have to feel his way through the fight. He came out in the first round like he was going to be dominant. It's absolutely no surprise that he dominated right, the punch. spark. Put him on. I'm in here. He's just a flat out, a different league of fight. Right hand, that chopping right hand. All right, right, holds punch, on. Yeah. A little welt to the left on the left uh, side of the uh, left eye of uh, right, don't punch. Don't knock Moore, him nothing serious. He has been hammered here. Right, right, don't punch. Don't punch. Let him out. Well, they've been clinching much more the last two rounds, Nick, and it has not worked to Moore's advantage at all. He's been ineffective on the inside. It's been mostly holding, or as you saw a few seconds ago. Foreman landing to the body. So even when they're fighting on Morris right, terms, punch, punch. it's not to his benefit. Yeah, now you're getting into the, uh, we're getting so deep into the fight that fans getting a little restless. I'm sure even at home, you want to see Foreman. Uh, there he is, nice move. Yeah, right hand, but Counter you want to punch. see him starting to drop the curtain. You know, because the fight's in a pattern. It hasn't changed from the opening bell. Moore's doing almost nothing. Foreman winning every round. Now the mouth pieces out. James Moore spit it out. He got wrapped with a right hand again, a combination, and Foreman seems to be wanting to go for it here. Well, the referee's to quick. Right, is to wait for a low in the action, and Foreman should have jumped on his man. He really yeah. didn't until he saw the mouthpiece on the floor, but he should have jumped yeah, on this, him and not let Randy Newman uh, intervene there. Yeah, this hurts because I had a feeling that if Foreman, I thought he was going after it, didn't you, Steve? I did too, yeah. It out. <laughs> But now Moore got that little 10, 15 second respite. As we head to the ninth round here in Atlantic City. You fight like if you don't want this fight anymore, James. You don't want this fight anymore? Come on, James, you don't want this fight anymore? You could do this fight. You could do this, man. You could do this if you want to do it, no, no, no. but you got to keep going. Jab, right hook to the body. Jab, right hook to the body, left hook. You got to use your legs. You're not using your legs. Jab, right hook, left hook. Keep using your legs side to side, James. Come on, James. You got to fight if you want to fight. You got to make him fight. You're not making him fight. Action from round eight. James Moore's left ear is very red. That's why. Yuri Foreman clocked him with a right hand to the ear there. The mouthpiece came out. Moore looked very hurt there. He looks very confused and uh, disconsolate. He just looks discouraged. Huh? He does. He does. And, and it's got to be hard for his father, who's also in the corner, to watch. James Moore's dad is the coach of the Irish national team. Right. And coached his son through so many amateur successes. That has not translated to pro success for James Moore. Perhaps he was in the amateurs too long. Right? That's it. We're in the pros, pal. This is... Right, right, don't punch. Get out. Get out. A different league again. Yuri Foreman in the ninth here. And there he goes with that right, right don't hand. Punch, don't punch. Get out of there. And again, as you mentioned, Steve, it's Foreman, the tougher guy in the clinches. Now it's Moore coming forward again, trying to press the action, but unable to string shots together at all. Right, the right punch. hand in return from punch Foreman. Let's go. We did break. Newman telling him he did break. He hits you clean to James Moore. I'll tell you, Yuri has been reckless with his head, man. He really has. Right, don't punch. Moore with a good body shot, but he almost comes in not covered up. Foreman may time the next rush. Yeah, he moved back, and he timed it there. Right hand, left hand. Great, down the middle. Yuri needs to take your hit, Nick, and turn it up here, go for a finish. Wouldn't we like that? I mean, I have nothing against James Moore, but well, that, that's the outcome missing, is certainly right? not in, exactly. Right. That's what he's missing as a fighter. He's skilled, he's fast, he's very fast for 154 pounds. As you said, Steve, you know, he just doesn't have the leverage uh, where, when he's throwing where he is, how he's squared up, so. You know, some of that seems to be correctable, but it's a habit uh, nobody's broken. And you see him with the movement, more movement, every round, more movement. 
his two toughest fights and his two best opponents, Anthony Thompson and Sirkan, both of them made Yuri Foreman fight on the inside. Now, Yuri won both those fights Thompson very close, yes. right? But he did fight on the inside fairly well. I thought so. I mean, he's not a one-trick pony in terms of style, but he's not a puncher. And with the bouncing that he does, he'll never do one. So he is what he is. And if you don't like pure boxers, who are going to go the route most of the time, then you're not going to be a Yuri Foreman fan. Well, Steve, then the question right. becomes not only getting to the title, but can, can you win a title with his style? I say, of course you can if you win every round this way. You know, the adage, you got to beat the champion so badly. Well, I've never bought that. I mean, judges are not supposed to score for the champion in a close round just right. because he's the champion. Uh, Yuri can win a title. Uh, and he's turning it up now, and it's more than it's holding. I mean, he can outbox a lot of guys. He's outboxed them all his career. At that premier level, it could be another story. That's the guys we mentioned. End of the ninth. One to go. Bad cut. Left eye. James Moore. Come on. Work for us, champ. Work. Come on. Work for us. Yeah, Let's go. Let me take a look here. Come on, James, you're, you're lowering that, man. Why you This happens in the very end of the ninth round, and there's the butt. A, a right hand preceded that immediately, so it's hard to tell whether the cut was opened by that right hand or the butt. Up. But there was definitely Over. contact yeah, then, right. so you with got, uh, Foreman's head you there. Use more punches that's a pretty bad yeah. cut. You're not using no punches inside. Giving me some head back. Do it a Yuri Foreman show. This is the Yuri Foreman show, okay? I want your body. You gotta work better than that. Get this out. Let's go. Last round. Let's close the show. Ah, uh, the tenth round. They want the Yuri Foreman show. That means box, move, put on a show, fight fast. Don't be there. Don't take any chances. <laughs> In other words, don't go for the knockout. But he's fighting the same way. He's fighting a little bit more aggressive, Steve, I think, this fight. You know, the progress we've seen over the years, we saw him last in 05 on Showbox. We've seen a lot of his fights since. And uh, Foreman against Saul Bowman and uh, Andre Serkan. Well, those are some, he boxed beautifully. He was the stronger guy, I thought. Right hand again from uh, Foreman who shoves more down. Foreman's been the bully. Maybe James Moore needed to get angry a little earlier. He looks angry now. Right, right, right. But just for the record, Nick, Randy Newman ruled that cut open by a punch. Yeah, I thought it was. Looking at that. Not that it matters, right? Yeah, that, that right hand was, I thought, clean right, as a whistle. Punch, punch. But Randy only got one look at it. We got a second. Again, the bewitched, bothered, and bewildered, and it's Yuri Foreman, who is the instrument of out, agony punch. for him, round after round. Nick, I, I don't know, uh, nice combination by Yuri. I, I don't know if it's fair to criticize a fighter who's winning 10 out of 10 rounds, but any entertainer will tell you the big finish is part of the show. I don't see a big finish from Yuri. I don't see him trying for a big finish. Steve, he never gambles, does he? You've seen so many of his fights in New York. And he's sticking the W in his pocket. He's going home. He's waiting for that call. I don't think he's been hit flush twice in this fight. He is ranked top ten, I think, by just about all the alphas. Yeah, he is. So he, he qualifies is. for a title shot at well, any point. And again, I'm talking to top ranks Bruce Tramplers and maybe Daniel Santos would be first in line. But you've got Verno Phillips, there's Sergio Martinez, the tricky left-hander, there's uh, Sergei Dezin Zurich. Frank, don't punch, let him out. And you know, he's not gonna fight guys like James Kirkland, Joe Green, or take a chance. Let him, let him, let him, he's gonna go right to a title fight, isn't he? No, would they want to fight him? All right, don't punch, don't punch, let him out. Uh, Paul Williams part of that division, this division now, too, Steve. Do you want to fight Paul Williams? I don't think anybody yeah. does. No. <laughs> Mouthpiece out again. 
Listen, they could take Foreman's uh, gloves off and, or tie his hands and it would make a difference at this point. I don't know what the problem with the mouthpiece is. This is what, third time, fourth time? Yeah, that's about the only thing Yuri Foreman did wrong. He brought an over-the-counter mouthpiece. Everything else worked to perfection as he boxed his way beautifully to what we would say commandingly shut out performance. Huh, Steve? No doubt. I mean, you didn't ask me for my score once. I think I know why. <laughs> Was there a point? 100 to 90, uh, Yuri Foreman. All right, Steve, as we look at Yuri Foreman uh, again, wants to get a title yeah, shot at 28. Now with 27 fights in the bank and ranked across the board. Well deserved. It should happen next year, it would seem. And for James Moore, it's back to the club fighter circuit, isn't it, Steve? Indeed. He was rubbing his head in the cup for him. See that? Well, this was his big moment, his biggest fight by far. His biggest chance to break through. Sorry, Apple. No one feels worse about it than James Moore. Keep the gloves, please. advantage and a mobility advantage from the very start. We saw that in the first 30 seconds of round one against James Moore. His weapon of choice was the right hand. You see him throwing it a variety of ways. He threw it off a jab there. There it's an overhand right. I believe that was the first round. And what he did was he let Moore come to him into range and he was fast enough. There they fire at the same time. He was fast enough to land that right hand over Moore's left hand again and again and again. And every time James Moore showed a little aggressiveness, he paid for it by getting hit with a right hand. And we get the official word now from ring announcer Joe Antonacci. Boxing fans, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Gene Williams scores the fight. 99-90. Judge Steve Weisfeld scores it, 100 to 90. Judge Raul Nieve scores the bout, 99-91. All for your winner by unanimous decision. And still, the NABF Junior Middleweight Champion from Brooklyn. Yuri Foreman moves to 27 and 0. A wall to wall romp over James Moore. What a beautiful exhibition of boxing it was.